Hello and welcome. My name is John Cassie Rice. I'm the author of Unlock the Peril Stories. And this week, I'm very excited to have a good friend of mine who I've known for ages, Tulu, who's going to talk about his journey from starting off struggling in life to becoming a very successful trainer. I believe working uh, in various countries around the world, running his own company. So welcome, Tulu. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. I, appreciate, I know you're a busy man, so I really appreciate you taking the time out to join us here. Now, yeah, you've got quite an interesting good. journey. You have you started, you were telling me, sort of struggling a little bit in life. Uh, then you came across this NLP thing. And, um, and it was one of the catalysts that shifts it. So I'd be interested in exploring that because I think there's a lot of people that would really benefit from that. Yeah, um, I think you said it uh, accurately. It was uh, not just one of the turning points, it was the turning point for me personally in my life. Uh, about 12 years ago, um, I came across NLP. Prior to that point, um, I had no um, goals. I was down in the dumps, I was struggling. Uh, I, I don't know if I ever told you this, John, but I was actually homeless. Um, oh wow! For, for for a time, yeah, um, and not homeless—the kind of homeless that you sleep on mommy's couch or sleep on a friend's couch. Now I was literally on a park bench um, for a few days in Notting Hill. Um, I had just lost a job and uh, just been evicted from home. Um, I was supposed to spend a few days um, with a friend of mine till I get myself uh, back on my feet. Um, and unfortunately, my friend didn't tell me um, that he it was, it wasn't going to be um, in town. Uh, so I traveled, got there, couldn't get a hold of him. Um, and I literally just had nowhere to go. Not, you know, and it was, um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty hurried, dark period um, of my life. Uh, and it, it was symptomatic of where I was at that point. Um, I, I didn't have any goals, ambitions. Uh, I'd worked uh, in restaurants, a few sort of odd jobs, just doing enough to get by. Um, and it, it was um, at that point that I decided I needed to do something uh, to make a shift. Um, and I, I got myself, you know, back back up, I, I got a job and uh, I went back to uni. Uh, I, by the way, at, at this point, I had quit uni three times. Wow. I started, I started uh, a, you know, English uh, bachelor's degree, uh, dropped out after the first year, then I did a LLB for law degree, dropped out after the second year um, and I, was doing a, uh, a communications degree, uh, dropped out just before I handed in my dissertation. Oh. So I'd, I'd been, uh, that period, I, I had absolutely sort of no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't have um, you know, any desires to do anything in particular. So it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great time for me. So I, I, I decided I was gonna you know, get back on my feet, uh, I got a job, uh, and I decided to, um, start taking life seriously. Um, and I think at that point I was ready, um, to start making changes, but I, I didn't have any tools or techniques, uh, to use. And, um, I came across this, uh, NLP two day immersion seminar. Um, and it was, it, for me, it was the change in, it was the turning point uh, because we we're able to do sort of, you know, uh, some, some visioning. We're, we're able to talk about limiting beliefs. Um, we're able to, um, you know, really uh, understand the power of uh, the mind. And I was able to uh, forgive myself for the guilt that I was harboring. Um, but at the end of that particular seminar, 
uh, I realized that I wasn't going to be paying uh, 1,500 pounds or 15,000 pounds for a uh, for a NLP training, <laughs> we, even though it was it was it was it was really good. Uh, but I, I think it was um, a lot of you know very salesy American you know flashy American um, right. NLP stage guy. Uh, and it was, uh, but it opened my eyes to the possibilities, and I started uh, searching. Oh, I, I don't know if I mentioned uh, I, I came across the word NLP from a friend of mine who is a poet, and he used it in in a in a post in a stand up poetry and i 'd never heard of the word before and I just kind of after the the gig I went home and I googled n l p and I was like, "Oh wow, okay and then I you know went to this today seminar but after that seminar, I started searching uh, and I you know was looking for uh, a, a, a a program that was more in tune with my personal values um, which is where I found you and uh and that from that point it's been you know the turning point from the two day diploma to the uh practitioner to the master practitioner it was um really the thing that i could say um gave me the tools that i use every day um i remember setting my very first goal and i remember that it was a technique that you talked about um, where you put yourself into the moment and write the goal as if it is in, in the present tense um, and and see it manifest and feel it and hear it um, and just kind of associate with, with the goal as if it's already uh, happened. And I remember that was... Um, 12 years ago now, 11 years ago. Yeah, it's been 12 um, years since you've been on the course. Yeah. <laughs> the, wow. the, 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 this is back when we were in uh, the nunnery. Yes, yes. We, yeah. yeah. Just for listeners, we, we uh, down in the, um, uh, it wasn't Covent Garden, was it? It was. No, it was somewhere in West London, I think. Yes, yes. Um, but we, there was a beautiful, there was an old building there uh, run by yeah. nuns. And they used to let us rent a room there. They were just lovely. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was, that was beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I set my very first goal. I remember at that point, I wrote, um, you, you, um, we went through well-formed outcomes. Yes. Um, at, at that point, And I wrote down um, my personal goals for the very first time in my life. Uh, my, wow. uh, my personal goals. Uh, um, the business that I wanted, um, and I wrote down the colors that it was going to have. Um, I wrote down what it was going to do. Um, I wrote down where it was going to be and where it wasn't going to be, who it was going to be with, who it wasn't going to be with. Um, and when I look back at that goal, every single thing that I wrote actually is manifested. Wow. Um, so the, the colors that I wrote, purple and <laughs> purple, and brown and gray, are my business colors right now. Our, our logo is exactly that. Um, it's, it's, you know, the, the countries that I said, I wrote down that we will be in are the countries that we are in. Um, it, it's literally everything word for word. It's kind of, you know, manifested. And um, that was, you know, one of the tools that I, I find valuable um, every single year I write a set of goals in that format and my wife came across one of the goals that I wrote in 2009 um, she, she she literally just kind of came up you know got, got an old laptop opened it up and she saw this goal and it described I wasn't married when I wrote that goal, by the way. It described uh, my, 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 my wife, it described my child, it described, uh, I wrote the name, I wrote what the car I was driving in detail as if it was real. And I totally forgotten about it. She came across it, she was like, when did you write this? I mean, the only thing is, um, I don't know if 
you know, one of the names you wrote is not what we named our daughter. It's like, oh. did you make a mistake? No, no, I wrote that years before. Yeah. And she was amazed that, you know, I, I'd written that goal prior to even knowing her. So, um, yeah, the, the goal setting has been, for me, one of the sort of the, the, the grounding um, forces in my life and the thing that's kind of propelled me to doing everything I'm doing today. Um, and yeah, and it's given me that sort of, sort of drive to just keep pressing forward and keep growing. And sometimes I feel like I, I I've lost a number of years in my life, um, whilst I was, you know, searching and being, uh, uh, aimless and, and without, without any goals. Um, so we sometimes I feel like I the lessons that come from that time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it kind of gives me that. Um, you know, feel grateful, grateful each time um, to see the growth um, and appreciate all that's happened over the last 10, 12 years. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a good, it's been a good few years. Well, one thing will be useful is that you've got, you've, uh, over the years now, you've built up this experience of setting goals. And I'm guessing you've yes. refined the process over that time. I have refined my process, but it's still very much the way you taught me, John. Ah. Uh, I try not to, I, I trust the process so much. And I actually teach my students that process as well. Um, Excellent. And I, I, I hope it's okay, by the way. Yes. <laughs> so, the more people exposed to this stuff, the better. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, um, as you as you probably uh, as you know, just for um, I, you mentioned it at the beginning, um, uh, I'm a trainer, train uh, and, a, and a consultant, um, and I deliver sort of uh, training to people changing careers. Um, within that program, I coach as well. So, um, and a lot of what we t what I talk about is sort of making those changes. But I I'm usually specific about career changes but naturally it spills into you know everything else so you know those goal sets and techniques have been uh, very very uh profoundly useful for me excellent excellent now you say you set goals every year so do, do you have a set yes. time when you do this and do you spend a day on it a week what, what's your your methodology yeah so um every year uh, around November, um, I set a number of goals for the, you know, for the year ahead, and every quarter I review them. Um, so I, I tried, I tried, uh, and I started doing November about six or seven years ago. Um, prior to that point, I'd do it at you know December, like everybody else. Um, it wasn't that uh, that that process was fine for me. Um, but but I thought I want to get get a head start. Right. Um, I gave myself a little bit of a head start to um, to start working towards what next year will be. So my process is really taking some time out um, into the woods and just being connected with nature and reviewing the year uh, prior and setting goals for the f uh, following year. Um, Excellent. So you get you get out of the homestead, you get out of business, always, and you go somewhere always. in nature. Yep. Uh, so away from everything. Away from everything. The last one went to New Forest. Oh, beautiful um, place. That was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So I go away into the, in, you know, connect with nature. And um, I stay in a hotel. I don't, I don't stay in a park bench. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and just, um, you know, use that time. Uh, I, I do at least two or three days. Um, but use that time to, to refresh, connect and, and just, you know, meditate and, um, just, uh, review what I've done so far and what I'm planning on doing. Uh, and then I start writing, start writing my goals always in the presence with the dates. It's 1st of June, 2018. I'm looking in my new, um, three bed new build apart uh, house in Dartford and um, or it's uh, November 2018 I've just handed in my 
uh, third uh, PhD assignments and um, and and I even include the emotions that I'm feeling at that point, um, uh, including you know what I'd done uh, and how I was feeling and and yeah I just kind of make it put myself in that moment and make it real like I've right. achieved it. Excellent. So, now, now one of the things I know about you, Tulu, is that you have a lot of energy. You're you're doing this. <laughs> studying you're running the business yeah. you've got a family yeah. uh, but you always seem to be upbeat and motivated what what's what's the, give us the inside secret what, what are you doing uh, so I don't know that I am always motivated so for me the goals are the driving force so the I've, I've got my year ahead plan so I, it's kind of like you you get yourself onto a racetrack and for most people the difficulty is to get on the racetrack but when you're on the racetrack you've got other drivers you've got you know you've got momentum yeah so the momentum just carries you till you kind of run out of gas and you need to refuel so for me I, I, it's not so much that i'm always motivated i'm always uh, aware of where I'm at personally and always making sure that I'm on the track whatever it, for whatever it is that I'm trying to get I'm always on the track so um, I know I told you this a few years ago we really wanted to get a doctorate just get apply and get in and then um, a routine will form that will ensure that you see it through um, starting a business just get it get started then your people your customers will call you so often that you have no choice but to, you know, <laughs> do it. You know, you, you're, so, so for me, that's been the strategy. It's been get on the track and let the momentum carry you. Um, Excellent. And, and that, that, that's worked for me um, over the last few years. So, I, and one thing that I uh, try always to be aware of as well is I don't always try to achieve every single one of my goals because I feel, this might be a limiting belief, I feel that if I get them all, it wasn't hard enough. It wasn't stretching enough. Oh, okay. So I'd leave a little bit. So I, uh, I, for the last few years, uh, I always kind of find like about 75 to 80% done. And then it goes, and then at the end of the year, in November, I go, okay, that was good. I'm okay with that. And then, you know, do it again. But years where I achieved them all, I'm like, eh, could I have done better? Uh -huh. so, so that little bit yes yeah, getting yeah. that balance isn't it between um yeah. being able to achieve something that's realistic but also stretch yourself yeah absolutely absolutely so you know finding that balance has been good um yeah uh, but the key thing is being getting on the or getting on the track and setting it up setting it in motion and moving with the momentum you know and a, and a routine follows um, in terms of energy, I turned 40 last week and it's been Happy one of those things. Thank you. It's been one of those things that I, I you know, I've had to adjust uh, over the last few years um, where I've got to find time to eat better. I've got to make sure that I'm, you know, working out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got to make sure that I'm just kind of feeling my um, routine with things that help me physically as well. So uh, I'm not tired when I get home because when I get home, I've got to train. <laughs> so when I get home, I've got to do stuff. So yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really important. I mean, you're still a youngster. I'm in my 50s now, so. <laughs> but it is so important to be able to sort of look after yourself. I think yeah. regardless of any age, because if yeah. you're striving for goals, yeah, you do need that energy. Yeah, the thing is, for me, it's a thing because I've taken it for granted until very recently. Um, and it's that, you know, conscious awareness of, okay, now I've got to pay attention. Up until this point, I, you, know, you, you, don't, you don't really pay that much attention because you feel like you're invisible. You just kind of keep going. Um, yes. And yeah, and luckily for me, I've been quite healthy in the sense that I'd never had any sort of illness that's landed me in a hospital or anything like that. So 
you know, you, you kind of get to that point where you start to take it for granted. So, yeah, so consciously pay attention to it now. So on that journey, we started off sleeping in, a, in on a park bench. We've, um, we've made a decision to do something about our lives and not sure what. Um, you come across this NLP thing. You've attended a few yep. seminars. And uh, this turned your life one. around. You just one. <laughs> yeah. What, what are they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think everything has a um, purpose. So I think I yes. know the other seminar you were talking about. It's a big event yes. with hundreds, yes. thousands of people there. And yes. Yes, so thousands of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're good fun, those events. Yeah, they're good fun. But at that point, I'd never done anything like that. Uh, no. This was my very first experience of anything like that. And it was very good, it was cathartic. Um, and it was a good wake up call. It was a good shift. And it yeah. got me searching and it got me actively looking for how I could, you know, do, do this. See, it got me believing that I had control. I had the power. I could make, you know, thought process changes. Um, lots of beliefs that I harbored, that I held, that I had to let go of. Um, and yeah, lots of rewiring to do. Uh, so it kind of got me into the mind space that I was able to do it. And that kind of drove me in the, and, and carried me through, through my path. So, yes. yeah. And I think one of the things you said, which I think is really important, is that if you are thinking of taking some sort of training that has this type of depth of transformation, is that the values need to align. Absolutely. Absolutely. For me, that was... Uh, a big deal even though I didn't know that that was what it was no. I just knew that wasn't quite for me um, but when I see what it is that's for me I would know and it would be uh, yeah and what 12 years on <laughs> you know still learning so and that's what's so yeah. wonderful about it isn't it <laughs> it's just so Absolutely. great so t let's just touch before we bring this to an end Let's touch a little bit on your business. So I know you've mentioned it. You, you know, run the organization, training and consultancy. So tell me a little bit about your, your company. So, that, uh... so, so um, my business is called Career Transitioners. Uh, the aim is to help uh, mid-career professionals develop their careers in this digital age. Um, and that's been one area of of passion for me over the last few years. Um, I, did a, I did a master's degree in organizational psychology and one of the things that I researched was um, mid-career professionals um, and their uh, learning and their professional development. And I found that there was not much in terms of help and support for people going through um, you know, who are halfway through their careers. So not the school livers, like you, after your second, third job, uh, you want to kind of move into another career. There wasn't much support, much guidance um, for those people. Lots of money was being pumped or is still being pumped into the, um, you know, graduates. Um, lots of internship schemes, lots of, you know, programs, yes. but not much for mid-career professionals. And, um, careers have been changing over the last few years and lots of jobs are now um, almost out of reach of people who already have careers but a lot of people are already uh, feeling stagnated in their careers and job security is not there as much so trying lots of people are trying to change careers but don't know how so you know when I did that research I found that there were really just three things that stop people from from progressing their careers it's time, money, and confidence right. um, for a lot of mid-career professionals. And that seems to, seems to be the common theme every single time. Um, time because they've got families, they've got lives, so they don't have time to do the research, to do the learning, to, to do what they need to do. Uh, money because they've got mortgages to pay most of the time yeah. and they've got kids. So, you know, uh, a, a very expensive program is really sometimes, you know, out of reach because they can't connect. And confidence because... Most of the time, they feel inadequate, unskilled, or not as skilled as they would like to be. Um, and it's the, the combination of those three that um, made it quite a dire situation for most mid-career professionals. And careers are changing. A lot of things are becoming 
digitalized now, lots of digital transformation, lots of you know jobs shifting um, uh, on, online, and, and lots of IT roles uh, becoming uh, more ubiquitous. Um, so making that transition and kind of moving with the times has been a challenge for a lot of people. So if, uh, we, I, I focus on helping people make that change Excellent. through training, through mentoring, through coaching, and through um, practical experience of, uh, of, of putting into practice what they've learned in a classroom. So um, uh, our flagship program is called the Agile BA Fast Track Program. Um, Agile is a product management methodology that's yeah. quite popular these days. Uh, business analysis is a uh, relatively new career profession, uh, a career for um, the IT world, but it's not really about IT. So people think business analysts are IT people. They're really not. So um, training, we would deliver training on business analysis, what it is, uh, how to get started in it. We deliver training on Agile and also train people on how to use the tools that business analysts use um, uh, to, to help businesses deliver requirements and solutions um, and of course coach them to, to, to start to make that uh, transition great and if so, somebody wanted to contact you with help yes. in any of those areas how would they do that they can email me uh, it's tolu t-o-l-u at careertransitioners.com career spelled c-a-r-e-e-r -E -E transitioners spelled t-r-a-n S T I O N E R S dot com. Uh, or you can just search career transitioners and we've got a Google, we've got a, a, a Facebook page, we've got a LinkedIn page, we've got a Twitter page, we've got an Instagram page. You're Can't everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. Drop Thank me you. an email or see us online. Excellent. Thank you ever so much for your time, Tulu. Uh, you, you're always a passionate, caring person as we look up at your ceiling. <laughs> that, that's if you're on the video you'll the camera movement <laughs> thank you ever so much for sharing your experience and your your journey it's and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon